Contact Session 1, Part 3 of Reaction Kinetics. Let us look at the mass balance on steady state reactors. Consider a reactor where we have steam methane uh, occurring, so it's methane plus steam reacting to CO and hydrogen, as shown. Um, think of it as a block where you have a stream coming in and a stream coming out, and the reactor is where the chemical transformations occur. The stoichiometry we've been studying earlier must hold across the reactor. As a consequence, this means that the moles of methane consumed in the reactor is equal to the moles of water consumed in the reactor, which is also equal to the moles of CO produced in the reactor, and it's equal to one third of the moles of hydrogen produced. As a consequence, this means the number of moles of carbon in the feed to the reactor must be equal to the number of moles of carbon in the outlet of the reactor or the moles of hydrogen in the feed to the reactor must be equal to the moles of hydrogen in the outlet, and similarly for the oxygen in the feed must be the same as the oxygen in the outlet. As a further consequence, the mass of material flowing into the reactor must be equal to the mass of material flowing out of the reactor. Let's try uh, put some numbers and see if we can actually do the mass balance. It's a fairly simple concept, but probably one of the most important concepts of chemical engineering. Let's consider our steam methane reformer. And what we say is we have 100 kilomoles per hour of methane flowing into the reactor and 100 kilomoles per hour of water in the feed to the reactor. We're given that the outlet contains 20 kilomoles per hour of methane. In other words, not all the methane is converted in the reactor. What we'd like to know is what are the molar flow rates out of the process. Now, the way I normally like to present the results is in a table. And what I do is I set up a table where I have the species in, the, in a column on the left hand side. So I have the, the, the uh, methane, water, CO, hydrogen. And I've also put the atoms, carbon, hydrogen and oxygen in. I've put the information we already have. In other words, we have 100 kilomoles per hour of methane flowing in to the reactor and 100 kilomoles per hour of water flowing into the reactor. And I have no CO or hydrogen flowing in. Coming out, I've got 20 kilomoles per hour of methane. What I'd like you to now do is calculate all the other values in the table. In other words, the flow rate of CO, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen out, and the flow rate of water, CO, and hydrogen. I suggest you try this calculation. Uh, pause the video now, and when you're ready, on the next slide, we will go through the solution. Let us look at the solution. We see that we have 100 kilomoles per hour of methane flowing into the reactor and 20 leaving, which means 80 kilomoles per hour was consumed in the reactor of methane. What we also then know from stoichiometry is for every mole of methane we use up or convert in the reactor, we have to make one mole of CO. Uh, no CO came in in the feed, and therefore 80 kilomoles per hour of CO must be leaving the reactor. From the stoichiometry, we see for every one mole of CO we make, we have to make three moles of hydrogen. So therefore, three times 80, or 240 kilomoles per hour of hydrogen must be flowing out of the reactor. Uh, we still have one block missing water. And uh, if we think of what the reaction is telling us, it tells us for every one mole of methane we use up, we use up one mole of water. Uh, we actually used up 80 kilomoles per hour of methane. Therefore, we used up 80 kilomoles per hour of water. We had a 100 in, we used up 80. And so 20 kilomoles per hour of water must be flowing out. We are now going to look at the atoms uh, of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen flowing into the reactor and carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen flowing out. If we look at carbon, what we see is that carbon comes in yeah, through the methane. And for every one mole of methane, one mole of carbon comes in. And similarly, uh, if we had CO flowing in for every one mole of CO, we would bring in one mole of carbon atoms. Uh, but we don't have any carbon coming in. So if we look at the carbon coming in, 
we only have the 100 coming from the methane. Carbon flowing out, the methane flowing out here carries one mole of carbon atoms with it and the carbon monoxide flowing out, each mole of carbon monoxide also carries one mole of carbon atoms. And so we have 20 plus 80 or 100 kilomoles per hour of carbon atoms coming out the reactor and the carbon balances. If we look at hydrogen atoms, and please we're looking at hydrogen here, as opposed to H2 there, these are atoms we're looking at. Where do the atoms, hydrogen atoms come from? Well, methane carries in four hydrogen atoms with it. Water carries in two hydrogen atoms with it. And the hydrogen itself carries in two hydrogen atoms with it. So if we see where hydrogen is flowing in, it's four times the moles of uh, methane flowing in plus two times the moles of water flowing in, which gives us 600 kilomoles per hour flowing in. Coming out, we would take four times the methane flowing out plus two times the water flowing out plus two times the hydrogen flowing out to give us the number of hydrogen atoms flowing out of the reactor, which is 600. And so we see the hydrogen atoms balance across the reactor. Lastly, if we look at the oxygen, the oxygen is carried into the reactor through the water. So we have 100 kilomoles per hour of oxygen atoms flowing into the reactor. And the oxygen atoms are carried out both with the carbon monoxide and the unconverted water, which gives us 100 kilomoles per hour of oxygen atoms flowing out of the reactor. We're now given that we have 20 kilomoles per hour of water leaving the reactor. What we need to do is calculate all the molar flow rates out of the process. So the first thing we do is set up our table with methane, water, CO, hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen and oxygen as shown, and we put in the data we know. We know the flow rates of methane, water, CO and hydrogen into the reactor, and we know that 20 kilomoles per hour of water are leaving the reactor. What I'd like you to do is see if you can do this mass balance or mole balance across the reactor. I suggest you pause the video and try and do the answer. We will give uh, the answer on the next slide. Right, so we have to fill in all these blocks. The data we have is that we have 50 kilomoles of water flowing into the reactor and 20 kilomoles per hour of water flowing out of the reactor. And this tells us 30 kilomoles per hour of water is being converted in the reactor. We know that for every mole of water we use up, we have to use up one mole of methane. And so therefore, 30 kilomoles of water of methane must have been converted. We had 100, we've used up 30, which means 70 kilomoles per hour of methane must be flowing out of the reactor. We must have made 30 kilomoles per hour in the reactor, and we had 10 flowing in. So coming out of the reactor, we must have the 10 that flowed in, plus the 30 we made to give us 40 kilomoles an hour of CO flowing out of the reactor. We had no hydrogen coming in, and we know that for every one mole of water we used up, we had to have made three moles of hydrogen, which means we had three times 30 or 90 kilomoles per hour of hydrogen flowing out of the reactor. Let's have a look at the element balance across the reactor and see if it works. Carbon comes in through the methane, where each kilomole per hour of of methane brings in one kilomole per hour of carbon and in the CO. So coming into the reactor, we have 100 plus 10 or 110 kilomoles per hour of carbon. Carbon flows out of the reactor through again the methane and the CO, and that gives us 70 plus 40 or also again 110 kilomoles per hour of carbon flowing out. We can check the hydrogen. The hydrogen flows into the reactor four moles of hydrogen flows in with every mole of methane and two moles of hydrogen flows in with every mole of water. So it's four times 100 plus two times 50 or 500 kilomoles per hour of hydrogen flowing in. Hydrogen leaves in the methane, in the water and in the hydrogen. And if we check the balance, we also get 500 kilomoles per hour of hydrogen flowing out. Oxygen comes in through the CO and the water um, that's 50 plus 10, or 60 kilomoles per hour of oxygen coming in. Oxygen leaves again just in the water and the CO, and remember one mole of oxygen is carried out with every one mole of water. And so we have 20 kilomoles of water, 
and 40 kilomoles per hour of CO, which gives us 60 kilomoles per hour, and we see that the number of moles of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen entering the reactor is the same as that leaving, which gives us comfort that we have actually done a balance that is consistent. This is the end of session one.